Hello everybody, Luna here, and today we're actually finally talking about the next book in the Book of Silence trilogy out of the Duncton series, Duncton Rising. I actually managed to get this from the same store I found the first book at, so I'm hoping to go back there tomorrow and hopefully find the last book in this trilogy. <clears throat> as well as two more out of the first trilogy, because I found the last book from that set. So in this one, we start off with Privet, Maple, Willem, Fieldfair, and Chater are, have all left and are heading for Care Caradon to find out what the newborns are planning, because they're doing some kind of big meet up there. <clears throat> Master Stower, and... yeah, I think it's Stower. There's Stower and Sterling, get the two mixed up a lot. Is in the ancient system, protecting the six books of Moldum from the purge the newborns are doing on the Duncan Library. In most of our views of what's happening in Duncton, we get through the eyes of Pumpkin, the librarian aide, who's watching all this like destruction happen in the library and can't do anything about it, but is aware of the fact that his silence and his like general look of innocence protects him. It's an interesting read, it really is. Like it's hard to put in perspective how good these books are. Imagine Redwall, like that kind of interesting storytelling with the small animals, except like a hundred times better. Because it's not annoying, they're not just little people stand-ins. The moles are very distinctly something different. And it helps that humans exist in this universe. We never really seem to encounter them, but we're aware of roads and cars, and there's all this little drama going on with the moles that we don't know anything about. And that's amazing to me. Especially looking at the mole religions. Because in this book, we get a better look at what the newborns are. They didn't start off evil. Their leader, Thrip, isn't technically that bad. He's pretty much a byproduct of a system that during the War of the Word and the Stone, they were heavily decimated by the followers of the word. And as a result, they ended up becoming religious extremists towards the stone. It's only when Quail gets involved that things actually get really screwed up. Because he rules based on fear and just general unpleasantness. And when they, they actually go to the big meeting with the newborns, the whole thing has this kind of vibe of one of those, like, faith revival tents, but with murder being a potential the entire time. It's crazy. It's like a mix of, like, Nazi Germany and born-again Christians. It's not a good combination at all, and I'm sure the South has stuff like that, so, yay. <clears throat> Sorry. Throat's bugging me a bit. Been, I've been working a lot lately. So, you know, dry throat, it catches you. Anyways. We also find out more about Privet's life before she came to Duncton, and what happened when she brought Rooster to her home. Which is something you can kind of predict happening in the first book. Pretty much her slutty sister, Lime, seduces Rooster. Privet, enraged and, like, depressed by all of this, actually runs out and gets herself caught by Rooster's father, who at the time was attacking the den system they were in. And uh, Rooster's father, Red Ratcher, is known for raping and murdering females. Rooster finds out about this, and actually steps up and kills his own father, but by doing so he can no longer be a Master Delver, because Master Delvers don't kill. He also willingly stays with Lime. Like, that's one of the more interesting things about his character. He doesn't, like, he knows that what he did was wrong and that he hurt Privet, 
But at the same time, he's also not willing to abandon Lyme. It feels, he feels it's his responsibility now to be with her. And she actually does stay faithful to him. For as long as it counts. When she does finally get pregnant, she gets pissed off and tells him, Oh, it's not yours. And she runs away. And something which I don't remember if I predicted in my review of the first book from the series. But it becomes increasingly obvious as you read that Willem is Rooster's son. And they do eventually flat out just state it. But it's pretty damn obvious where they're going with that. <clears throat> I mean, <clears throat> it just makes sense that it would be that case. And it's just like the perfect coincidence. Because the characters aren't... They're, they're, they have an idea that that might be the case when they get more information. But they're not 100% certain. <clears throat> So, yeah, Rooster actually comes back into the story, too. It turns out he was captured by the newborns, and he escapes, and they plan they make him do this, like, big confession in front of everybody at the big meeting. And Privet ultimately ends up helping him escape, because the newborns have all intent on killing him. But they're not killing them by, like, you know, clawing them to death or whatnot, like they're doing with some of the moles in Duncton. Instead, they're killing them by pushing them down this steep hill, because they fall uncontrollably and end up dying. And they do manage to save Rooster from this fate. And then they continue their journey. They haven't solved the newborn issue. In fact, the newborn issue becomes more complex, because now we know that the senior brothers really weren't that bad. However... Quail is very dangerous, so is his son. And that Thrip's son, Cherville, who was in the first book as well, he's a little bit more complex than you expect because he has a great love and respect for his father and seems to know that what they're doing is wrong. But he also is afraid to do anything to stop it, from what we can tell. Like, Thrip knows he can't do shit. And it's just kind of a matter of time until things get worse. Although he does point out that this was something that needed to happen. That Moldem had become far too peaceful, pretty much. And something had to give. It's weird, but, you know. You can understand his perspective a little bit once they actually explain it in the story. From what he went through. And you can't help but really wonder, like, you know, where is this going to go? We've got this extremist religion that's taking over all the systems. You've got Privet still looking for the Book of Silence, because by finding all seven of the books of Moldem together, there's great things they can do. You have her unresolved, although getting close to resolved relationship with Rooster, with the two of them finally reunited, and the knowledge that this the child she was raising is actually her sister and Rooster's son, and the only surviving one in the litter. It gets pretty darn good. There's also the introduction of a mole called Wee, who's kind of annoying, but he serves his purpose. And then you also have a bit of a story going on with Field Fair and Shader. It's not as focused on as much, same with the one with Pumpkin. Like, it comes up less. But pretty much, Field Fair ends up leading a gang of moles who are originally going to go to Duncton. But finding out what's going on there, she's like, yeah, no, there's somewhere else. We can go to Uffington instead. Because Uffington's in the middle of nowhere, so no one's going to go there. Chater dies. I'd say spoilers, but these books are bloody old. And Pumpkin ends up right, like leading a bit of a revolution. And yeah, you get some really horrifyingly graphic imagery of stuff that happens in the ancient system relating to tree roots. And it's a good reminder of, yeah, these are not kids' books. Like, geez, they get dark at times. And that's kind of what makes them so compelling. Is that you know, like, there's a lot at stake here. It's not going to be like, oh no, and they, you know, have a quiet off-screen death. No, you're going to get, like, graphic descriptions of, like, horrible injuries happening to these characters. And it's amazing how much it pulls you in for a story that's about moles. We don't even have moles, or really, we have pocket gophers. 
So I don't, I've never seen a mole. I assume they're quite cute from what I've seen of pictures, but eh. Anyways, yeah, same as the first book. Highly recommend this. Fascinating books. Chunky. So it takes you like a good month to read them. And just overall very enjoyable. I was originally going to do another book review between like this and the previous one, but with work I just haven't had time. But once I get like two days off in a row where I don't have anything to do, I'll see about getting more reviews out. Or at least record some like spares so I can get some extra stuff up between things, but we'll see what happens. Doing another romance book after this one, so look forward to that. This one feels very forced and weak compared to the previous one, so that's always fun. And I will see you guys next time.